These videos are educational in nature and are designed to help people over 21 who smoke cigarettes switch to a less harmful alternative. <clears throat> All right, what's up everybody? Grim Green back here. Today, I wanted to spend some time talking about yet another recently retracted anti-vaping study. Firstly, I'm not a scientist. I'm not a doctor. This is not medical advice. I rely on and learn from people much, much smarter than myself. Associations of smoking and e-cigarettes and chronic liver disease is the name of this newly retracted study. Study. It's an N-H-A-N-E-S study, and N-H-A-N-E-S is CDC. This is their National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey. So not only is this a newly retracted anti-vaping study, it's a newly retracted CDC anti-vaping study that, as we'll see, I think was intended to be like guidance for policymakers. But why was the CDC study retracted? Well, they said after publication of this article, concerns have been raised regarding the article's methodology, source data processing, including statistical analysis, and reliability of conclusions. The authors failed to provide valid explanations and rebuttal for these concerns. Thus, this article has been retracted at the request of the editor-in-chief. Why is it always bad methodology that gets these anti-vaping studies retracted? This is the same reason that the Stanton Glantz American Heart Association study was retracted. They claimed to have found a link between regular e-cigarette use and an elevated risk of a myocardial infarction. Some day and every day e-cigarette use are associated with increased risk of having a myocardial infarction. The peer reviewers of the Stanton Glantz American Heart Association now retracted study pointed out the important question of did these myocardial infarctions happen before or after the respondents initiated e-cigarette use. Turns out that the majority of these MIs happened before the person even started vaping. So it got retracted. Bad methodology. And honestly, kind of even just reading the conclusions of this most recently retracted study seems a little suspect right out of the gate. Our study concluded that despite the low frequency of e-cigarette use in respondents with a history of liver disease, there were higher odds of e-cigarette use amongst patients with chronic liver disease. Hence, more future prospective studies are needed to further evaluate the effects of e-cigarette on liver disease patients, as well as the precise mechanisms of e-cigarette toxins on the liver. Additionally, our study findings suggest that public health practitioners and policymakers should consider more strong evidence of the toxic effects of e-cigarettes when making decisions about regulations of e-cigarettes in the United States. Despite the low frequency of e-cigarette use in patients with a history of liver disease, there were still higher odds of e-cigarette use among patients with chronic liver disease? To me, this looks like they found 178,000 people with chronic liver disease and then just separated them into buckets of e-cigarette users, smokers, dual users, and non-smokers and non-vapers, and then attributed those liver problems of the e-cigarette users to their e-cigarette use. Hey, it's Editing Guy here, and another thing I think that's getting very lost in the conversation is the fact that the overwhelming majority of adult vapors are former cigarette smokers and are probably still recovering from the harm done by cigarettes. That's why studies like this fail to find harm in vaping. What do you attribute to vaping and what do you attribute to the years of former cigarette smoking? Logic dictates that if someone vaped exclusive nicotine for two years, but prior to that smoked cigarettes for 25 years, the damage is probably coming from the former cigarette smoking. Whether that's myocardial infarction or liver disease, it probably came from smoking that harms literally every organ in your body. Okay, I'm done here. Back to the other guy. Man, they are really, really trying to find some harms from vaping, and they're doing it wrong because they're not directly comparing the harms from vaping to the known harms from lethal combustible tobacco cigarettes. Thank God for peer reviewers because this study got retracted before any headlines about e-cigarette use and liver damage could, you know, spread across the internet. Regardless, I'm gonna have links in the description to the things I talked about and to King's College London, the Cochrane Tobacco Addiction Group, and the Royal College of Physicians if anybody's interested in some actual science and information about the relative harms of of vaping and e-cigarettes. This has been a Grim Green video. Let's stay smoke free. You know, every single day. <coughs> it's like 10.30 and I'm uh, just gonna smoke, so.